So, today's service is a little different from our usual setup. You might have noticed that. One thing, we're both wearing hats. You see, both Sam and I had the opportunity to volunteer at Camp de Venneville Pines this summer during elementary school camp in July. However, we volunteered in different capacities. So we wanted to share with you what we individually experienced and then get together in our camp chairs and have a campfire chat. No campfire, though. It's a little hot. And then we'll talk about what makes camp so magical. I was thrilled to be asked to return back to camp. Last year, I had been a staff member at elementary camp as well as at senior high camp. In the past, I had been a staff member at junior high camp, and when my kids were wee ones, I had helped out at family and elementary winter camp. So this year, I was to be a staff member at junior high camp again, which would take place the week after elementary camp. But I was also doing something totally new this year. I had been asked to join the counselor training staff during elementary camp. I would be joining Mary and Melinda in being a trainer of counselors in training, otherwise known as CITs, in addition to acting as someone the counselors could come to if they had questions or conundrums during the week. I was so excited. As a kid, I had gone to summer camp for years, starting in first grade all the way up until I graduated from high school. And I had always loved and respected the CITs and counselors and had considered becoming one myself at one of my sleepaway camps. Now, as a grown-up, air quotes, I was being entrusted with the care and development of these young people who were such an important part of camp. When I arrived at camp the day before the campers and CITs arrived, I was given a really thick binder and an official counselor training hat, which I accidentally left at home this morning. I foolishly thought that they were all I needed to be a counselor trainer. But I soon learned otherwise. At first, I was kind of shy about contributing much to the training session. I would help out reading out loud sections of the binder, but I spent a lot of my time observing the 10 CITs, observing the two other counselor trainers, how everyone interacted with each other, and then learning what each group did. I took to heart the expression that camp is for campers, that everything we do at camp is to ensure that the campers are safe and taken care of and having fun. But I also learned that the CITs were campers too and that we, were, we trainers were doing, what we trainers were doing was for them as well. Because Camp Venable Pines is a UU camp, it is steeped in the principles of our faith. We talked with our CITs about creating a covenant with their campers as we created one for our group, and we did our best to hold each other to it, and ourselves to it as well. We discussed this idea of right relations, how we relate to each other and what happens when we somehow fall out of right relations. Our CITs researched and created posters on child development, which I thought was really cool. And we covered some really heavy topics like anti-oppression and anti-racism work. Now, by this point, I felt comfortable enough to lead discussion on the last two topics, and I introduced the, to the group to the concept of white lib guilt bingo, which was something I used to do with the high school youth group many, many, many moons ago. Of course, it was important for the CITs to have fun and to get to know the campers so, that th so they would engage in activities like leading songs before meals, helping take campers to workshops like swimming and archery, and help out with bedtime. This is when we trainers got a chance to see the CITs in action, and it was wonderful to see them interact with the kids. The week, I'm not gonna lie, was pretty intense. Life post-COVID has brought out some big feelings in people of all ages. Self-care was important, but then also <clears throat> was this idea of compartmentalization. When, what was really cool 
was the fact that we bonded as a group. And if someone needed to take care of themselves, we stepped in and ensured that they had time to take care of themselves. Compartment, compartmentalization doesn't work if your mental walls are breaking down. But there is also the magic of seeing these young people bloom and grow and develop and flourish before our eyes. I loved our CITs. I still do. There was the enthusiastic singing of the song, We Don't Talk About Bruno, from the movie Encanto. They would just burst out into song. It was freaking awesome. There was the discussion of two key slang terms, slay and facts, and which order they should be used in in a sentence. We got into very deep discussions of this. There was the skit they performed for the Camp Variety Show in which Fred the Moose spilt his juice. In learning how to be a counselor trainer, I learned a lot about myself, which I kind of didn't expect, but I should by this point because that's how the universe works. I appreciated getting a chance to work with not only the campers, but also our CITs and to help people problem solve, to provide a listening ear, a thinking mind, and most importantly, a caring heart. And to be honest, I cannot wait until next year. Blessed be. Do you remember your freshman year of high school? Some nods, specifically like the first day or first week. Some of you remember more than others. A little closer to you. And uh, you, might, you might have sort of known the place and but you still had to learn how to navigate the hallways and buildings. You probably have some friends there already, but there are way more people you don't know, and you're going to need to talk to them at some point. I get, you, you keep repeating to yourself things like, don't be a dork, or do not say anything inappropriate. And then come the introductions and the icebreakers and thinking to yourself, oh, please let me be paired with someone nice. That was me 30 years ago, and then that was me a month ago. I was super, super stoked to go to elementary camp. I'd been wanting to go for a long time. I'd been to DeBeneville a few times, kind of knew the place, but elementary camp, completely new to me. I had some friends there, but there were a lot of people I did not know. I was the freshman. I was the noob. I was the one telling myself, don't be a dork. That first gathering in the lodge with all of the staff and the counselors sitting in a large circle, we did the intros and the icebreakers. And I did get paired with someone very nice. When we were asked what our favorite part of camp is, I kind of froze. How am I supposed to have a favorite part when I've never done elementary camp before? So as I waited my turn, coming around the circle, I started thinking back to all of the kids and the teens from Chalice who have gone to camp and thought about the after effects. I'd ask, so how was camp? And the responses were almost always a dreamy smile and a glowing face paired with, I had so much fun. I made this one friend and we did this one thing and we went to this one place and I want to do it again. The, the magical swoon that inevitably presented itself after an excitement-filled week at DeBeneville. That's what I shared. And people nodded. 
They got it because they'd felt it. And now it was my turn. So throughout my week at camp, I sat on the floor in another staff person's room and we played with a massive pile of fidgets and giggled like children until way past bedtime. I watched children and adults truly dance like no one was watching to that song that we heard during the offering. Streamers were spiraling and voices were crooning. Oh, my heart would just swell every afternoon during worship that was led by different campers every day. I totally melted as a camper who I had been consoling turned to another camper and said, you're an amazing friend. And that camper turned back around and said, and you're an amazing friend too. I sang along and giggled during all of the camp songs. I seemed to have moose on the brain. Mooses, niece. I don't know, but you try keeping a straight face when counselors and campers are staggering around the deck singing, zombie moose, zombie moose. It's awesome. Every day I attended staff meetings where everyone shared joys and affirmations about all the amazingness they witnessed. I hugged and I high-fived and I pounded knuckles and I cheered and I was exhausted. And my knee was far from thrilled with me. <sighs> Lots of hills and stairs, dozens of times a day. I supported others who struggled and felt supported myself when I had my own share of struggles and challenging moments. I felt seen, I felt heard, I felt appreciated, even in all my dorky glory, and I felt all those things for everyone else. At the end of the week, when it's time for the goodbye hugs and the thank yous and the I'm so glad I met yous. I felt it. I felt the glow. I felt the smile that wouldn't go away. I felt the magic that generations of campers and counselors had been feeling for decades. And I can't wait to go back. What do you think, Ayana? You ready for the campfire? I'm ready for the campfire. I'm ready for the campfire. <laughs> you thought these were just props. <laughs> Standing up here is hard. No, climbing the hill at the Benadil is hard. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm not out of shape, but that place makes me pant. It makes everyone pant. <laughs> you just, like, you, you're walking from your car, and you get to a point, and you're just like, <laughs> and the kids are, like, running up the hill, and you're like, how do you do that? And they're like, oh, right, you're seven. <laughs> it's just insane. I, I spent most nights walking with one of the cabins all the way up in the back far corner from the lodge and that fabulous counselor and all of her campers just trooping along and singing. And I'm just <gasps> at the back of the lodge oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to not pass out. And then once they're situated, very slowly crawl all the way back to my cabin on the other side. I can get there. I can get there. I can get there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Then you get to the stairs and your knee's like going, no. -uh. Like, oh, come on. There are only like seven stairs. Suck it up. <laughs> Do I want to walk in this door? where there are no stairs, but my room's on the other side, or do I want to walk in the door closer to my room, but there are stairs. Yeah. I... Yeah. There, there's, there's no amount of ointment and Advil 
<laughs> that can make it go away. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I love that place so much. And when did you start going? Oh. You were listing off all of the different yeah, camps I that you've I done. When my, I think I was... Yeah, Duncan, who is now 21, was probably about four or five mm -hmm. when we started going. So really, really, really early. We went to winter camp because we wanted snow. We had moved here from Chicago, and we're like, okay, winter is nice and all <laughs> here in California, but where's the freaking snow? And like, so we like would go and for snow. And we were like, okay, this is cool. We got snow. We've got people. We've got crafts. This is pretty sweet. This is a good deal. And then people were like, you know, we've got an overnight camp. And we're like, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> and then Duncan got old enough to do overnight camp, and he just loved it. And like the first year he was there, he was voted most excellent hair. <laughs> and if you've seen my child, Duncan, he did have most excellent hair. Just He had fabulous hair. Yeah. That's, I... Before we were here, we were at the Goebel Center in Thousand Oaks, and I always knew that the RE classes had let out because I could see Duncan's hair flying <laughs> past the windows. He had fantastic hair. That was yeah. a well-earned award. Yeah. Yeah. Still has fabulous hair. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Yeah. So when did you start doing like the, the programming or volunteering to be on staff? Um, I started doing that pretty early during, for winter camp. And then, when, and then when Griff Duncan was in middle school, I actually did middle school camp I, um, with um, Mary Ann and Kathleen. So I remember playing statues. I remember I was in, I was in charge of evening entertainment, which could be <laughs> read very differently. <laughs> if you're a grown-up, but, you know, that entailed doing things like the, the, we don't call it a dance, because the idea of a dance sends angst through the hearts of middle schoolers, and they get all upset, and then they start thinking they need a date, and all this other stuff, so we had a dance party, um, or a music party, rather. Um, I was in charge of the music party and taking song requests, um, I was in charge of the movie night. I was in charge of like a lot of just sort of evening stuff that we did for fun. I was in charge of this amazing game called um, Night Walk, or what's it called? Oh, you don't know it. We I don't. I know. What is it called, Alex? Night, Night Crossing. Night Crossing, yeah. They did Night Crossing in middle school. Night Crossing is where you have to get, they turn off all the lights in camp, and you have to get from the lodge to this one building where the library is and back in the dark and you have a little red ticket that you start off with and you have to get this ticket signed by the person in the other building and then you have to keep hold of that ticket on your way back. And the thing is that there are counselors and staff in the woods with flashlights <laughs> and if they sign <laughs> the flashlight on you, you lose your ticket. But sometimes you can talk them out of it. Like they'll do things like say, oh, gee, that's a funny-looking tree. And you just sit there going. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll let you pass. Or they'll say, tell us a joke. And you can you know, say, knock, knock. Is there the interrupting cow? The interrupting moo? And then they'll let you pass. So night crossing is like a middle school and high school thing. I loved the game night. Game night was awesome. That was so much fun. Um, the one that, I guess it started last summer, one of the counselors just came up with the run and scream game. Yes. <laughs> and I kept being told by our dean, Kathleen, you have to see this game. It's hysterical. And that you have three campers, and sometimes the counselors and CITs would get in there, and they'd be lined up at the bottom of this hill, and it'd be one, two, three, go, and they'd take off running up the hill, screaming at the top of their lungs as far as they could go. And then once they weren't able to scream, they'd have their chalk and they'd mark where they'd stop. And so there are all these spots up the hill from how far, and some of those kids have lungs because oh, they're yeah. like up and around the bend and you just hear sc screams echoing across the camp, but like really good screams, not 
bad, scary horror movie camp. Oh, screen. yeah. One of the CIT's, <laughs> Alex, well, we had two Alexes. We have Alex the Red and Alex the Small. And Alex the Small <laughs> did theater. So had amazing lung capacity, and they kicked serious booty <laughs> in the screaming game. And Mary Ann, who uh, you worked with with the CITs, Mary Ann had been getting around in a scooter. No, Mary. Mary, sorry, Mary. I know better. I know Mary for years. Um, She'd been getting around in a scooter, recovering from surgery, and so she did the run and scream, but in her scooter. <laughs> and putting up the hill, and everyone's chanting for Mary. And she's just, but she wasn't screaming, she was using the horn on her scooter. <laughs> so, I think she got a pass, everyone was just oh, yeah. enjoying totally. it. I love it so much. And I doubt the interactions between everyone. It's, you know, it wasn't, I, w I was wondering, like, are there going to be, like, the clicky aspects of it? Because let's be real, elementary school has its clicks as well. It happens. Oh. Um, but I, I, was, I, I was really wanting to pay attention, like, how does everyone sort of pair off in group? And it was very amoebous. That's the word. Amoebus. Amoeba-like? Amoeba-like. I'm going to just invent the word amoebus. Okay, if it's not there, word. I'm inventing the word amoebus. Okay. <laughs> the campers were in their cabins, but then they were also um, reorganized into circle groups that they would move around for a different part each day doing different activities. And then the counselors... You know, they're, they're overseeing their different cabins, but then they're also splitting off and overseeing different people. And program staff, just how everyone blended and worked together. And you'd, you'd spend, every day you're spending time with different people. And it just, I loved, I loved the blending of it. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, that's your group. I'm not going near your group. It was, oh, hi, a new friend. Let us talk and chat. And I loved that. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I noticed that in the CIT group. Um, like, I was sort of like going, I wonder how, how it's going to, you know, how are people going to hang? And then you had the uniting moment of, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. <laughs> and I was like, ah, there we go. That's how we unite. Um, you know, just little things would unite people in different mm -hmm. ways. Or like, you know, singing the, you know, about Fred the Moose, you know, <laughs> everyone on the deck singing, you know, how he got moose in his hair. And I just loved watching the camp song. And mm -hmm. like the kids would get into it and the counselors would get into it. And I just loved seeing how people united around certain things. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I really loved watching was just sort of, how everyone took such care of each other. Yeah. I thought that was so yeah. important. Stay hydrated. Oh, yes. Stay hydrated. Did, did you drink your water? Oh, yeah. Always drink your water. Do you, do you have your water bottle? Yeah. Oh, do you need me to fill that for you? I'm, I'm going to the sink. Do you need your water? Stay, hyd stay hydrated right back there. Cheers. Hey, stay hydrated. <laughs> it's... Yeah. I mean, they made up a camp song. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a song about you can't ride my little red wagon. And they, you know, <laughs> they made up a song that goes along with it. Um, I'm blanking. Some of our CIT people were there. How did it go? Thank you. Dehydration is a serious matter. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You can't go without drinking any water. You can't go without drinking any water. Dehydration is a serious matter. Dehydration is a serious matter. Chug, 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 chug. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> you know, I mean, we sing about that stuff. It was important. But yeah, everyone was like, they had their water bottles. No one stole mine this year. I was really happy. <laughs> so yeah, it was really important. And just, you know, at, in Jinx Lake, which had been a puddle for many years, was full. And like people were just like, oh, Jinx Lake! 
and people were totally into it. And we had, you know, people in life jackets taking care of each other, making sure that no one like flipped a boat or canoeing was really key this year. Yeah, canoeing. That was I. I did not do the canoe. I observed the canoe. Um, that that was something. No one fell out of a canoe. That's like, yeah, right. Amen. No one fell out of a canoe, which I think it's at its deepest is six feet. Like it's not super deep, but you know. Yeah. I th I think of Moana. Fish poo on you. So who wants to fall in the lake? But there. Are, the moments of making sure that, okay, is your is your life jacket on? Do you have your water bottle? And we did a lot of talk in the beginning around self-care, right. making sure that you have ev all of your needs met. But then it was also very, everyone was very observant of each other. So yeah, I'm taking care of my needs, but that person, there's something going on. It looks like they're struggling or that person's eyes are red, they were just crying, are you okay, do you need something? Or this person is sitting off by themselves, do you need something? And when you offered help, there was so much gratitude behind it as well. I walked up to, while we were at the lake, one of the campers sort of wandered off to the very edge and I'm watching her walk off and, and sit and I, made eye contact with one of the counselors. I'm like, I'm going to go check. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you OK? Do you need anything? I, I got smacked in the face, and it was totally an accident, but I just need a moment. And OK, go ahead and take your moment. If you need anything, let us know. If you know it's an injury, we can call on Nurse Holly. Dear Nurse Holly busted her butt the entire week. She was amazing. But it was the final look of the camper looking at me going, thank you for checking on me. And there was so much of that throughout. There's, it's, I, it, without getting like, oh, the cliche of we're family, but it was very, it had that family feel to it. I only met you three days ago, but I really care about you and your needs, and I want to make sure you're having a good time. Thank you for checking on me. Are you having a good time? And it added into the fun. And there was that, we got to be vulnerable with each other. Yeah. It was a totally safe place to be vulnerable with each other. Tons of laughter, totally moments of tears. It happens. We had, how like, close to 70 people at the camp together, tears are gonna happen, but it was okay to have those moments because it was safe. You were with people that cared about you. Yeah, we're okay. Definitely. Um, during like towards the later part of the week, what the mm -hmm. um, counselor trainers would do is we would go about and sort of observe the CITs working with the cabin and you would see how the kids were reacting with and interacting with the CITs and how the CITs were interacting with the counselors. And there was such care, you know, for each other. And there was one cabin that came up with a great, you know, there were some very spirited children in that cabin. And they came up with a great <laughs> way to get them to brush their teeth, which was to encourage them to do it by, you know, it was sort of kind of like, we're going to be rough and ready. We're going to spit over the side of the railing. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of doing it at the sink where it was all tame and, and mild-mannered, we're going to do it outside in the open. And, <laughs> and the kids freaking loved it. They were just totally into it. And it got them to brush their teeth. So, like, you know, innovation was a great part of camp is just trying to figure out how do we, you know, encourage our kids to do, you know, things that are good for them? And that's something that I learned from because I'm always sort of thinking about, you know, with my, you know, like how do I ask someone to do something when there might be a reason for them not to want to do it? So there was just great innovation going on, mm -hmm. great care going on. It was really awesome just to watch. And I was just like, oh, this is so touching, but I've got to go to the next cabin. 
Yeah. Um, two of the cabins were really next to each, or really close to each other, and just the intermingling of people from the cabins, and they'd like yell to each <laughs> other from their from their decks, like, "Hey, how's it going? Oh, we're good. You want to play? Um, whoa, what's that game? Rat slap? And you know, <laughs> it was awesome. So the counselors were so good at the innovative piece and thinking outside the box. And, and a lot of the program staff, too, and, and the CITs, once y'all gave them their tools and started letting them get the hands-on piece, everyone, you know, there's, there's the programming. This is set. This is what we're doing. But life happens, so how do we shift and how do we change? And how you had mentioned earlier, like people were getting into their feelings and okay, we're having a feelings moment. How do we shift? How do it's the flexibility in it, I think, made it that much more enjoyable. Yeah. Everyone was on their toes and people knew what to expect. But let's do this too. Yeah. Lots of, I forgot to silence my phone. There's, <laughs> I know. I have to say being without a phone that week was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. And there, there is a bit of a signal up there and I'd pull it out to take pictures and videos, but just being off the phone and talking to the campers and watching counselors and I can't wait to do it again. Oh, yeah. Neither can I. I can't wait. This was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I want to go back. So do I. Okay. Definitely. We should make plans. We should make plans. We'll do it again next year. Next year. I ain't touching winter camp. Oh. <laughs> I don't do snow. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. We don't mix. <laughs> oh, okay. I won't force you to do winter camp. Okay. Thank you. But I'll totally see you next summer I'll at see you next summer. <laughs> And I hope to see you all up there at some point. FYI, there's a cluster retreat coming up at the end of September. And the cluster retreat, while different than elementary camp, is still loads of fun. Mm -hmm. Just hanging up out in the woods, like see if you can find the fairy houses. Mm -hmm. There are fairy houses up there. Hang out, you know, get some, you know, fireside time in there. Do some hiking, drink your water. The creek has been flowing beautifully. Oh, it sounds so amazing. Check it out. Yeah. Yes, bring some cash to leave in the tip box for those who work in the kitchen. Yep. They bust their butts for us. They're awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. 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 Yay, camp. <laughs> <laughs>